Oh, hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Come take a seat. Yeah, my name's Holly. What's your name? Thank you so much for that. And your last name? How do you spell that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. How'd you go getting here today? Can you hear the rain outside? I know it is pouring right now. Oh, you drove? Oh, that's good. I wouldn't want you having to walk in the rain. Do you want a cup of tea, by the way? Drink of water, any juice, anything like that? No? Okay. Well, if you change your mind, just let me know, okay? Okay. So I'm Holly, and I'll be your therapist for today. You booked an appointment with me? Yep. Okay, great. I just want you to know that whatever you say today between you and me is completely confidential, unless there is a serious risk of harm to yourself or to somebody else. Do you understand? Okay, very good. All right, so let's begin. Why don't we start with what brought you to see me today? Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I take notes? It's just for, for our records. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is calming down. Yes. Oh, sorry to interrupt. It's just raining very heavily. Okay. So you think you're having some problems with some OCD behaviors? Okay. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Maybe what behaviors you've been exhibiting? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you think you've been having a lot of symmetry-like behaviours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some examples of your symmetry OCD is that you don't like the TV on an odd number, you want it to be on an even number. Okay. Yeah, what else? Right, so you're saying if you touch something with one hand, you also have to touch it with the other hand? Mm -hmm. Is that for the same amount of time or... Okay, yes, it is. Alright. Now what happens if you don't touch an object with the other hand? How would that make you feel? Mm-hmm. So it makes you very distressed, very anxious, okay? And you feel like something bad's going to happen? Alright, could you elaborate a little more on that? What do you think could happen if you don't, if you don't perform these rituals that you're telling me about? Okay, so you're worried that something could happen to a loved one, like someone could die, or something bad's going to happen to yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're just not sure, but you just feel like something bad's going to happen. Okay, and you don't want to take that risk. sound very scary. Do you have any other rituals that you feel like you need to complete other than the symmetry OCD you've just explained? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so you have other rituals involving checking the locks on the doors, okay? So, so when you leave the house, how many times would you say that you check the lock on the door before you can leave? Mm -hmm. Up to five times. Okay. And sometimes you just don't leave the house at all. Okay. And what do you think will happen if you don't check the door a certain amount of times? Mm-hmm. That maybe someone could break in. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay, so you've mentioned that you tend to check the lock five times. Is that a common, a reoccurring number for you in your OCD rituals, by chance? It is? Okay. Could you explain that a little bit more for me, please? Mm hmm Okay. So you check the back door as well as locked, and you do that five times? Uh-huh. You also go around the whole house and make sure all the lights are off. Okay, the electrical appliances. That has to be five times. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. So even when you wake up in the morning. Okay. So even with touching things. Okay, that's I just find that um, interesting that with your symmetry OCD that your number is, is five yeah okay is there any reason where that where that number came from it's just a favorite number of yours growing up okay fair enough does anyone in your family have any symptoms of OCD do you know not aware of it okay and now have you ever seen a therapist before have you been formally diagnosed with OCD mm-hmm okay okay so a few years ago you were seeing a psychologist and they diagnosed you right and what happened with that psychologist It was all a little bit too overwhelming and you just weren't ready for the change. Mm hmm And you stopped going to your appointments. Okay. It can be really scary. Well, that's exactly right because when you're coming to therapy it is about making a change. And sometimes people aren't ready to make that change. Do you feel ready now? On a scale of 1 to 10, how ready are you feeling today? Okay. An 8? Well, okay. So it sounds like you're pretty ready for change. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. I'd love to hear that. <laughs> Alright. Well, typically OCD is treated with some graded exposure therapy mm -hmm. okay so you've done a little bit of that before with your psychologist okay but you'd like to try again i really admire your bravery here to keep trying it can be really easy for some to just think that they've failed and not want to try again but it's never too late it's never too late to try it. This could be the time you beat it once and for all. Yeah, and when I say beat it, I know it's not as simple as that, and there may be some intrusive thoughts that you struggle with on and off for many years. It's not an overnight fix. However, what we want to do with the exposure therapy is to lower your distress. That's the ultimate goal. 
Now, in regards to your OCD, I was just wondering, is there any rituals in the past that maybe you were successfully able to overcome in your journey so far? Because I know that rituals do change over time and maybe that there were some that you did stop along the way. Mm hmm Okay. Okay, so it sounds like it's been very challenging for you and you've really held on to these rituals and you don't want to let them go. Okay. Okay, that's totally fine. I'm really glad that you came in today so we can work together. You're going to be in such a safe environment to try these exposures, okay? You'll be in safe hands and I'll make sure that I can give you the tools that you can carry on outside of this therapy session. Exactly. Yeah, I understand. I know. A lot of people who come in to see me with OCD can say their rituals can take them hours. It can take hours of their day just so they can leave the house. Mm -hmm. And just as you've expressed to me, sometimes you don't even leave the house at all. It just takes too long and sometimes it's just too draining. That tells me it's really having a big impact on your level of functioning. I'd like to just try a little example of some graded uh, exposure therapy with you, if that's okay. I'd like to give you my pencil here, and I would like you to hold it with one hand, okay? How long would you normally hold it? Hold one hand. So about five seconds. Okay, and you, would you have to hold it in the other hand for five seconds also? Yes. Okay. As a starting point, I would like to see if you can hold it in one hand for three seconds and the other for three seconds. Can you try that for me? So instead of five, we're going to try three and it's still even. This is just very low tier and just seeing how you feel with that, okay? Okay. So I'm going to give this to you. Yep. And now I want you to hold it with your arm for three seconds. One, two, three. Amazing. Now you can stop. Mm -hmm. And now, swap it with the other hand. One, two, three, and stop. Okay, on a scale of one to ten, how uncomfortable do you feel? What's your level of distress? With a one being, I feel totally fine, to a ten being, I absolutely cannot cope, I can't do this. Okay, so about a five. Mind if I grab that pencil back so I can write that down? Thank you. Alright, so a 5 out of 10. Thank you. So you were able to cope with that quite well. Even though it wasn't your number that you normally have to follow. You were still able to cope, and you were okay, and you were able to sit with that feeling. Do you feel like you're able to sit with maybe a higher number? I'm a bit more nervous now. Are you willing to try? This time, I would like you to hold a pencil in your hand for three seconds on this side. And one second on this side and just put it down and that's it okay I know that it might feel really uncomfortable for you and I really want you to try and resist that urge to hold on to it longer okay 
you're in a safe space and you're okay and if you're getting too upset I can help calm you down get you back to where you need to be alright so here you go yeah now that hand three seconds Hands. One. Now put it down. Good job. Good job. That was great. You okay? Deep breaths. Yeah, in through your nose. Out through your mouth. It's okay. On a scale of one to ten, how do you feel? a seven. Okay. And what's going through your head right now? You feel like you want to touch it? You need to hold that pencil for two more seconds. What do you feel like is going to happen if you don't? Just that something bad is going to happen. So the purpose of this exercise is for you to learn how to sit in that distress and the more you can keep repeating those exposures and sitting with that level of distress and knowing that you're okay, nothing bad's actually going to happen, the less distressed you'll become over time. So if you were to repeat that exercise, yep, if you were to repeat it every day, I bet within a week the aim is that, yeah, exactly, that your distress is going to be a bit lowered. If you're willing, I'd like to give you a little bit of, a little bit of homework. Don't be scared. <laughs> I'd just like you to be able to practice exposure therapy in your home environment. Yeah. Yeah, because when you stop seeing me, you need to be able to implement these coping strategies in your own life. Exactly. So what I would like you to do is you mentioned that when you leave the house that you're checking the lock on the door five times, is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was wondering if the next time you go, you leave the house, how about you only check the lock two times? So instead of five, just check, check it two, okay? After you've done those two, I want you to sit with it, sit with that discomfort, and ride out the wave until it passes, okay? And if you could keep doing that all week, every time you leave the house, only checking the lock two times instead of five, I want you to tell me where you're feeling at the end of the week, okay? I want you to tell me if you've become less distressed over that given week. Do you think you can do that? I'm not going to completely take away all of the checking for you, so that's why I said two times. You can check once and you can go back and check one more time for that reassurance that you need, okay? And then afterwards, that's it. Okay. I'm really impressed at how eager you are to go home and try this. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you're really ready for change and that's really going to increase your likelihood of more success for sure I know this is going to be a really challenging journey but I'm going to be right here with you and giving you all the tools you need would you like to book another appointment in with me next week same time Well, thank you so much for coming in and seeing me today. It's been a pleasure. And I really hope you go okay this week and trying out those new exposures, okay? Okay, you take care. Bye.